Hello everybody and welcome to Game 5, King of the Hill, Episode 9. We have here our recently crowned king playing once again as the Soviets on the north side of Road to Tula, our current king, Nico. And in the southbound we have Mr. Asha Blois repping the first clan. First clan comprised of a lot of top level players looking to be crowned king for the He's played a few times in this season of King of the Hill, but has just come short of actually winning. Um, he's looking to change that, Stormless, on Road to yeah. Tula. I don't know if that he had the uh, the best introduction in King of the Hill. It's kind of like his debut showing. Uh, I think he put on a good performance. Didn't come out with the uh, the win. And uh, I wish him I wish him the best of luck coming up against one of the game's most fearsome uh all-time players especially on a Absolutely. map that uh you know is not commonly an auto match so whether that's an advantage or disadvantage we have to find out i hope we see something more than uh spec ops this game from masha Blois. i see he has lufafa ground forces in his loadout he's got uh von ivan doctrine in his loadout so i think um there's some potential for entertainment here don't forget, he could also convert OKW into the sixth faction this game offers as special operations. And, uh, and play that. <laughs> this is true. Now, uh, this is Let's an interesting Asha map, boys. by the way. Uh, Road to Tula has uh, you know, some pretty uh, brutal buildings here on the north of the VP. South side, not as much, to be honest. Uh, but the north side, you can get some strange engagements between these two buildings. Uh, Ashablar, I think, doing the right thing at the start. He's putting a front line up, trying to waste as much time as possible so that he can capture uh, some territories and uh, hopefully withstand the incoming M3 that will be on his front line shortly. The M3 is the ultimate test for the OKW player. The game is really usually determined by how you deal with the M3. And here it comes. Yep, it looks like it's going to be used to uh, push the Vox Grenadiers out of the cover position. Let's see how Ashabla decides to deal with that. The Stern Pioneers, who were building a preemptive mine for the M3, have been uh, pulled over. And actually, Nico may have overextended a little bit. A lot of damage taken to the M3. Okay, Lots W retains cover. Bleed. We see so many people uh, pumping out the Volks Grenadiers against the uh, the urban defense commander strategy. And uh, to be fair, Predigly earlier on in this uh, series played uh, played very well OKW against this commander. So perhaps Ashleblar may have been watching, wants to try it for himself. So this is a good. Yeah, mind you really placement. need the infantry to kill off the M42 when you get the chance you actually need something to follow up and take advantage of him um, being isolated here comes M3 for round 2 it's got some repairs in and it looks like the uh, combat engineers are queuing up their speak one bulk forced off there there we go there's the second one can't risk that there is the mine though don't forget that I think it narrowly missed oh, oh no it gets it finished and it. the M3 Finished the mine. I didn't even notice. I just assumed he canceled it. No, he did go back wow. to finish it. Wow. Nice pickup. A very important pickup, actually. Dealing with the M3 like that is uh, crucial. And of course, Nico knows that uh, he needs to make use of this time. He's building another M3, so there has been a stunt to Nico's teching. It's very promising from Asher. Apologies, Momo. I, uh, I can't reach the mute button in my setup, so... It's alright. Don't mind. What, what can I do, you know? I cough. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let it all out, so almost. Nico here starting to place some mines of his own. See our first... Uh... Okay, he's getting his medics now. Probably going to be a set of shock troops coming out for him as well, after he's able to reinforce everything. It's a good cutoff by uh, Nico. 
Gonna delay that mechanized regiment from building anything. At least I'm assuming there will be a mechanized regiment. But yep, here's our replacement M3, as you say. Revealed I still think itself. this is a smart choice from Nico, to be honest, because, uh, you know, he's got time that he really needs to make use of, and SWS isn't down yet. I don't know if Nico really could predict that it wasn't down, just by the amount of Volks on the field, but he's made absolutely the right choice here, and he's going to get double fuel at this stage, which I think is... Uh, a really big uh, talking point in this game to get double fuel early. He's going to be able to tech up to tier 3, get a T70 out in very good time. <coughs> Absolutely. Just have a There's our shock the, uh, troops. Tactical map uh, as well. So you can see Rotatula here. You've got uh, four strategic cutoffs that uh, separate all of the resources on this map so uh, players of course can just stray away from the center with perhaps a spearhead strategy to do some pretty intense resource denial uh, or of course players can spread out to capture their own resources uh, safely it's a lot of opportunities on this map i really like this kind of map design well i think bacon's done a really good job here and uh, it used to be a summer map so i'm not sure when this was changed or whether the summer one still exists Not enough this munitions nice. for a Faust for Asha is eating so much damage to this M3. He's not paying attention. He needs to retreat. He's no, throwing he's too away focused. his He's too focused on the uh, shock troops. Uh, way too focused on the shock troops in the center, actually. Yeah. As was I. Fox going to do a squad down. That's quite easy, really. Yeah, you need to be uh, on top of those kind of things, and that's not promising. But uh, Asha Blah, he's laying some more. Uh, shoe mines down. He's pretty deep in his own half of the map. Very expectant, I imagine, of the uh, M3 continuing to chase. He's 42 fuel at the moment, so just a bit of time before a potential Luke's can come out. I think that second M3 really <coughs> caught Asha Boys off guard. He just thought since he killed the original one he just was in the clear and he could further on and start attacking back but the second m3 really contained him and cost him a squad now he's just stuck trying to catch up and barely fighting outside of his base right now Pico with some great game sense he uh, after losing that first m3 has minesweepers on his engineers and has uh, detected a mine, although he didn't actually manage to sweep it when he went over. That's going to cost him some manpower and reinforcements. Asher there is trying to get his fuel back. The M3 is uh, repaired now and is coming back onto the map. Asher sees it and makes a quick retreat of his stern pioneers. What can be done on the right hand side though against these shock troops? Maybe a retreat need? There, there is only retreat, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so hoping the shocks would throw one in the path, but M3 came to try to clean up as well. Here comes the Panzer II in production. Doesn't like to chase the Volks all the way back. Three Volks engaging in the center. M3 is looking to react to that. Asher Boy spent all his munitions there on the medical crate, so these Volks are vulnerable. No, no Faust available. Let's take a quick look at how things are going at this stage. 43 kills to 19 losses for Nico. And uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty good opening, to be honest, for, for Soviets. Very good opening. You see, uh, tier 3 is going up for Nico now. It's paired with the arrival of the Panzer II Lukes. And uh, Faust just on the M3 there. We can assume that the uh, Panzer II, you see it there changing its, changing its direction. It knows exactly where to go. 
Can we see more Volks Grenadiers come up and give sight? They may be getting in the church to do so. In fact, no, they're going to continue on. There's a media PTRS in build. Those penal squads. M3 gets its engine damage off. Should be able to get away safely from the loops if he pops overdrive. Well, he just stopped in the middle of the road for some reason <laughs> and throws it away. To just literally stop moving. Oh, retreat path cut off here. Shocks trying to find out the uh, stern pioneers, and that's good reactions this time from Asher, who's going to get away unscathed. And uh, good opportunities here for the Lukes. Has a little bit of a window of time to uh, try and just harass the shocks. Of course, Nico sensibly bringing up PTRS Penal Battalion. <coughs> There's our Spec Ops lock-in. Try to throw an infiltration nader, but... Was only able to actually throw one off the bundle and was forced to retreat after. Shock troops are just that scary. Here's our T-17 now. Panzer II Lukes, what is it doing? It isn't even moving against the PTRSs. That was so close. Yeah. To being taken down. Totally unnecessary. MG-34 just came out for... Uh, for Asher. T-70's just made his first appearance on the left. I like this, you really see how uh, how Nico is working the cutoffs, denying the territory on the left hand side there, just through the uh, through the one strategic point. And it's really important you play, uh, this is one of the interesting things in Company of Heroes, like, it's not just about how you play like any other RTS with, uh, you know, faction versus faction, you have to play the map as well. You have to play it in terms of cover, right. you have to play it in terms of, you know, resource denial. And uh, one more thing, I've got to say. The, the, the snow really allows you to see the beauty in Company of Heroes. You see when the T-70 uh, coaxial MG fires and it like lights up the snow around it? Beautiful. Still graphically uh, pleasing game. We've only just recently in the last year with the GTX 1080 uh, as humans invented technology that has been able to showcase this game's true <laughs> graphical <Yeah>. potential. down there on the shocks. Panzer II Luke's trying to get some long distance damage off. Two models drop them on the shock troops. We do have the uh, Stern Pioneers with mine sweeping capabilities just patrolling the field right now. Trying to make sure there are no surprises for the uh, Panzer II and that's good attention to detail. I think we saw the Raquette in there hitting the T-70. Nice retreat. Path infiltration grenades. Dog's getting so low. Gets wiped by the Lukes. <coughs> <coughs> Tier 4 is up for Nico. He's building a T-34 now. Asha Bloy is just still fighting outside of his base. Down to 180 VPs. Luke's looking for blood now that it's made some space, but no sweeper is able to support its push. He's just right next to the mine there on the VP. He needs to be careful. Raketten hits a mine as well, gets knocked down to two men. Uh, 
Yeah, actually, it's, um... Asher is a long, long way away from that Command Panther. And, uh, of course, T-34-76 now on the field. So silent in the snow. These munitions have just oh, no. been so effective. Look at that. Just right on time, too, <laughs> for the T-70 and the engineers to come by and, and cap that. MD-34 might be able to suppress there before he can take it, though. And there's the T-34 here to finish off the game. No real defense here for Asha. Might be able to build a panic puma of something. Oh, the crush! Yeah, Asher's panicking. I think you can see it there. He's uh, not hit the retreat on the Raketan yet. Luke's just goes down at the top of the screen. Raketan down. And uh, now there's an MG trying to hold off the T-34 and the T-70. Asher knows it is time to throw in the towel. GG. GG.